What's here right now? What is the story that this pizza has to tell me? What is the pizza maker communicating to me? You have this wonderful opportunity to communicate to people through all of these different senses, them all to fire on the right cylinders at the right time. It's a constructive obsession. Here we are at Talbot Vineyards. I'm sitting with one of our favorite people and one of Pizza Quest's favorite people, John Arena, the owner of Metro Pizza in Las Vegas, Nevada. But here we are in this beautiful winery. It's kind of like France or something. You know, I may not go home. Yeah, that's I'm going to apply saying. for this a job in that tasting room. A little different, from, right? Yeah. Uh, Pizzeria Metro is is known through all throughout the country for having great pizza, first of all, but also the concept of Metro, which I find intriguing. You're really celebrating right. different styles of pizza. Yeah, my partner and I, my cousin, were we were Brooklyn-born pizza makers, so naturally we were convinced that the sun rises and sets over Brooklyn. We moved out to Las Vegas, and we found that people all over the world had the same kind of attachment to their local pizza that we had to our local mm. pizza. There was something uh, great about the whole experience and something that all of these places, whether they were a landmark pizzeria in Chicago or Boston or San Francisco, there was something that they all had in common. And that was that relationship with the guest, the relationship between the pizza maker mm. and the consumer. And we wanted to learn as much as we could about all the different pizza styles and embrace the whole thing and find what what we all had in common. What you celebrate through your business is what we try to celebrate through in our message on Pizza Quest, which is the celebration of artisanship wherever we find it. Yeah, Not just what, pizza, but no, you know, and any, that's any what the quest is all it's about. About right? the journey it, itself. Sure. Yeah. If you approach it by what's on the plate right now at this moment, what is the story that this pizza has to tell me? Yeah. In the reality of every day, when people come in and they just want to buy a pizza, a really good pizza, how do you how do you convey to them sort of this deeper level of understanding? I do it by trying to connect with each patron as much as I can. The ideal pizzeria to me would be a place where I just have a whole bunch of ingredients. I come in, we get to know each other, and I try to make something that is custom made for you. Yeah. Especially with pizza making because it's pizza a mano. You know, it's, your hands are so connected. Your spirit is so connected to that pizza that you're making for somebody that's now going to become part of their body. Can there be anything that's more of a responsibility? You know, that's why I'm not a fan of the angry chef movement on TV. Mm -hmm. I don't want an angry guy making my food. Think of the best meal that you ever had in your life. I guarantee it wasn't made by somebody that was mad that they had to cook. Mm. It was made by somebody that loved you. They loved you, yeah. And loved what they were doing and respected the food, and respected the process. And I know you put a lot of thought into the vendors that you use, the suppliers that you get your food from. Do you, how do you develop those relationships? How do you make determinations yourself on what you're going to use in, in the first thing? Food? The first thing is I want to work with people that I like. If it's somebody that I like, then I'm looking at their products. And also when you're selecting ingredients, you got to think about, what, just like the consumer should think about what's on the plate, you should think about what you're putting on that pizza. pizza. Standing in front of a pizza oven for 8, 10, 12 hours a day, really putting your heart and soul into it, it's not easy. How many it's years have you been doing it? 48 years. 48 years. You, and it sounds to me, in talking to you, that you've got every bit as much fire in your belly as when you started. More. Maybe more. More. For me, this is the golden age of pizza. The people that are involved now are bringing a whole new level of dedication. There's much more of an exchange of ideas and an exchange of knowledge than there used to be in the past. Nobody talked to each other. Nobody shared their secrets because right. they'd be out of a job. Right. And let's face it, most of the things that we thought were secrets, are they really that much se right. you know, that secret? Why are you so driven that you could hang in there for 48 years and still be this enthusiastic, even more enthusiastic than ever? Yeah, than my parents were in, were so in the pizza So you grew up in the pizza business. Yeah. When I say 48 years, I started making pizzas 48 years ago. When I turned 13, the day after I turned 13 in my family, you became a pizza maker. Mm. I was lucky that my dad was always a guy who said, why? This is what you do, but why? Ask yeah. why. Don't just do it because your grandfather did it that way. Mm -hmm. That kept it so interesting for me. Did your family have a chance to see you sort of blossom within the same family business that they, that they brought My you dad into? is 87 years old. He's he comes alive? to work every day. Still? Yeah. We wow. work together every, every day. 
When um, we opened a, st a store in a very busy uh, area of, of Las Vegas, it was a much anticipated store. We did a soft opening, which was we were just going to unlock the, not tell anybody that we were open, just unlock the doors and see what happens on a Sunday afternoon at five o'clock. Restaurant seats 250 people. We unlocked the doors at five o'clock to do a soft opening. By 10 after five, we were on a wait list. Mm. We stayed on a wait list for three months. After the first three days, my employees were cracking. And my dad, who was 81 at the time, I called him up and said, Dad, I can't do it, I, I need your help. And my dad came down, put his apron on, and he and I stood at that pizza board for three months making pizzas as fast as we could together. At my age and at my dad's age, we were able to work together side by side still, something that we've been doing since I was a baby. How do you put a value you on that? You can't put a value on that. If I'm sensing it correctly, that part of your current mission is to pass on to the next generation the same insight and the same sense of purpose that you've had. Sure. Found. You know, and I think it's so important that you get to a certain point in your life where you, where you share so that what you do doesn't become a commodity. That people can say, I can express myself not just by what I do, but by how I do it. Mm -hmm. John has summarized the very essence of what the quest is about, whether it's a pizza quest or just the quest. Great. Thanks, Thanks. so much, John. Okay. Thank you.